This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, how are you? It's Alex Bennett, and it is the ramble for uh, yet another uh, another week here. Uh, go until midnight. We'll have the citizens panel a little bit later on uh, in the program. Uh, but tonight, as we do every now and then, uh, we have a guest, and we love this guest. Because not only is he live from, well, he's not live, we recorded this earlier, but not only is he from San Francisco, but we have some live video on him, and it's, it's just, it's, 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 uh, it's Will Durst is who it is. There, ladies and gentlemen, with a wonderful cup of coffee that I saw him. I have my cup of coffee here, too. What Yours you, is bigger. What are you drinking today? Uh, this is Pete's. This is half supernatural and half... Um, Decaf French roast. Okay, now I have here a K cup that I'm using called. Ah, Big, how do you ca- like it? Called Big Bang. You know what it is? No. Remember, it's you a were lot telling me the last time about the Ethiopian. Yeah, yeah, Ethiopian Supernatural. Yeah, well, it is their K cup version of Ethiopian Supernatural called Big Bang. Oh, oh, oh. Big Bang. Yeah, and I just opened. Uh, I just ordered some more Big Bang today in the ground. Uh, so that I can uh, uh, compete with you because you recommended this. So, and it is. It's the best coffee I've ever had. Really. Yeah. Uh, just, it's, uh, yeah, well, it's also Pete's, and that's where, you know, Starbucks learned all their stuff. So well, I uh, always the master. Well, I had, uh, well, they started out together, Starbucks and the guy who did Pete's, and then they separated, right? They had a falling out or I don't know what uh, no, 50, 67, uh, Pete started, and then uh, the guys from Seattle came down and studied at Pete's, and they worked at Pete's, and then they moved up to Seattle, and they started Starbucks, and then Howard came in, and just like uh, Ray Kroc at McDonald's, he saw what they didn't see, oh, and he, uh, uh, yeah. I see. Okay, well, anyway... Uh, by the way, this is Will Durst. Did I mention that? Oh. No, I, I, hi, hi, Will. Uh, wave to the people out there. Anyway, yeah, you're going. We're, we'll talk about that in a minute. It's <laughs> it's, it's it's opening day for baseball. Yeah, Home opener for the Giants. For the Giants, right? Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, Buddy Love was in town, right? And he stayed here, and he said, uh, "So where's the closest Pete's Coffee?" And I said, uh, "San Francisco." <laughs> <laughs> they don't have any Pete's coffee in New York. They have a couple in Chicago. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of a couple in DC. Yeah. But haven't made it to New York yet, and I don't know why. Uh, I I don't know why either. But all I know is it's better coffee than Starbucks. You know. There are some people who say that it's gone downhill since the chairman's put it. Since the who? The Germans bought Pete's? Pete's, yeah. Really? Oh. Yeah, yeah, about two years ago. Yeah, well, anyway, it, it, it was always considered better than Starbucks. And you had them on the West Coast like crazy. There are Pete's coffee shops everywhere. But uh, in yeah, New York, in LA too. Can, can't, find one, can, can't find one in New York. So what do you do with your K-cups? Do you, do you fill your own K-cup? I, what I do is I open them up and swallow the grounds. <laughs> no, uh, what, what do I do? I just make it in the in the Keurig. Okay, because you know they have generic K-cups. Yeah, I know. That's why I went out and got the uh, ground coffee. I'm going to try it that way and see how it... How it do. I, I bet, because every K-cup that I've ever... And I tried the Peach, and I tried the Starbucks, and I carry K-cups with me when I travel. Yeah. Because a lot of hotels now have gone to the K-cup thing. Yeah. So, uh, and they give you this awful, awful coffee that comes with it. So I always have my Starbucks or my Pete's K-Cups. But even Starbucks and Pete's, they still taste a little plasticky, you know, because they've been encased 
in that plastic thing and vacuum yeah. sealed and yeah yeah well so that's why I'm, go I'm going to be interested enjoy. yeah I'm, I'm going to be interested to see how filling the generic k cups will make the coffee even better because i love this big bang i just i'm i adore it you know? ah, i gotta uh, try it i haven't tried the uh, the big bang yeah and uh uh, the reason I do the K cups is because I'm I'm the only one in the house that drinks coffee here. She that. goes yeah. out to Starbucks every morning and gets a cup of coffee, but she she won't make the K cups. She she wants to go to sit there and you know take up space at a Starbucks, uh, and so I'm the only one that that drinks actual coffee in this house. So I need to make it a cup at a time. I can't make it a pot at a time like you because you and your wife probably swill that thing right down, right? No, Debbie doesn't drink coffee. Oh, it's really? just me swilling. Oh, just you. Yeah. Oh, God. You, you must, I'm a solo swiller. You must be on a caffeine binge. Well, that's why I drink half half calf. That's why I drink half caffeine, half decaf. Oh, really? I should start doing that. So I can drink twice I, as I much coffee. If I took the ground version. As a matter of fact, I, yeah. I'm going to turn on my coffee maker right now. Yeah. Watch this. Yeah. While we're here, you know, I've started a new thing I'm doing occasionally on my... Uh, on my uh, website, on my uh, Facebook page, called Slow TV. Oh, really? Like yesterday, it was Watch the Snow Melt. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. So I like this, Slow TV. It, it move over just a little bit. Other, yeah, that way, yeah. Because I have you taking up, a, I'm taking up a little space on your shoulder there. Oh. Uh, no, so I, uh, I, I, I just decided I just stick a thing out the window. It snowed yesterday. First, it was watch the snow, slow TV, and then it was watch the snow melt, and you can actually see the water dripping from the roof coming down. Yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, I figure Will Durst makes you could you could actually yeah. do slow TV, watch my coffee, watch maker. my coffee maker. Do you remember that in the very beginning of the computer age, the internet? You could turn on and off the Cambridge coffee pot at Cambridge University. Do you oh remember no! That was one of the first things on the internet. Or you could no, you could watch the coffee pot. Oh yeah, because they did it so that if they were in another room, they could see how filled it was and whether it needed to be redone again. So everybody started just going to the Cambridge coffee pot. That that was before Facebook, folks. That was, that was the good old TV. days. That's there, how we amused ourselves there, back in the middle 80s. Hack <laughs> that, Cambridge Analytics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Uh, uh, we, what have you been doing? It's the, it's the third day of April. Uh, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. I, I haven't gotten out of the house. I, really. I really haven't. But they, what happened was they were making a movie in our courtyard, Right. So they oh, came, cool. so they came in and they 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 whacked all the weeds and everything in the courtyard and made that very nice and then they added some trees into the courtyard and they added huh. some foliage into the courtyard and my wife said I and Dwayne which is a guy that lives next door to us who used to work at Central Park uh, uh, get mowing the lawns and planting the tulips and everything said boy it really looks really great. So I went down there to see what it looked like, and I started feeling all these plants. They're props. <laughs> They're props. And I, I know I haven't looked down there today. They're finished shooting, but I bet all the fucking props are gone. You know, it doesn't look that good now. And and I, I they said, well, how do you know it was a now prop? They scoped it out for you. They I, they've landscaped it. Are you gonna just replace the props with live plants? Well, I said I went over to one of the trees and I like pulled on the pine f f uh, things or whatever and they just wouldn't you couldn't pull them off <laughs> and then I went over to where they had all the foliage and stuff that they had put in and one of them had tipped over and it was it was uh, nailed to a board <laughs> and I said oh it's really beautiful huh boy they did a great the only thing they did was mow the goddamn uh, you know clean up the uh, the ivy and stuff from the winter in the in what the, do you in want for free program. What hey, do you want for free? Hey, I wish the people who own this building would just hire props just to make it look better. You know, that's all they have to do. Just some props and that's it. So, ah, you know, the kids, the kids will ruin everything. Anyway, so um, uh, so you asked how I'm doing. Actually, I'm poorer today than I was yesterday. Oh, no. What happened to the stock uh, Well, market? I mean, well, the, yesterday it just took another tank and it took a tank because... 
Our president is doing something which he should be probably arrested for. He's fixing the stock market. He's affecting the stock market because he has decided he's going out after Bezos because Bezos owns the Washington Post and he doesn't like the way the Washington Post is reporting. So right. he's going after Amazon by doing the whole thing about the post office and the dad is all misinformation, total misinformation, right? And yesterday the stock market took a plunge because of it. That and the China trade war thing. Trade wars okay. are good, by the way, according to Trump. Trade wars yeah, are good. And it's it's easy. It's easy. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. yeah, trade war is good and easy. He's, trade war is good. You know, yeah. in his wildest imagination, Donald Trump never had to do business on this level. You know, he, well, he's building he, some fucking businesses to to learn or compromise or or uh, take advice or he's just no, play it. But everything he's get his way. Everything you know? he does is because of his feelings got hurt some way or another. You know, like he's completely wrong about Amazon and the post office. The post office bids for their business, and if they don't bid better than the other guy, they don't get the business. And by the way, he said they, Amazon has made the post office, uh, 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 has cost the post office lots of money. The fact is that the post office, that Amazon has the most profitable part of their operation are the packages they do for Amazon. Without that, they would be in a lot of trouble financially. So Well, they are. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Yeah. But the fact is like uh, but you know, so he was completely wrong about, you know, the, Bezos using the post office, okay? And then putting the mom and pops out of business. I where what world does he live in? He should get outdoors every now and then. The mom and pops were wiped out years ago by Walmart. You know, so, I mean, it, the insanity of it. And then the stock drops because, you know, hey, this is terrible. The president's saying these horrible things about Amazon and the Chinese are starting the trade war because now they're re countering and running tariffs on stuff we're doing. The poor farmers who send their wheat and grain over to China are losing money in this little trade war because the tariffs have now been thrown on their stuff. And it's always tit for tat. So it yeah. starts out with one thing, and then it's two, yeah. and then it's four, and then it's eight, and then it's 16, yeah. and there's, you yeah. know. It's tit for tat, but, uh, you know. Uh, uh, but I wonder, uh, I well, wonder, well, well, too. Well, wait a minute. Trump it, it, it does have a solution, though. He's going to get his tat back. <laughs> I wonder if he doesn't care because most of the tariffs that the Chinese put on mm – -hmm. Yesterday, at least they announced most of them. It, it seems like to me, I haven't seen any commentary or anything, but it seems like to me that most of the tariffs are on stuff that comes out of California, except for apples. But that's you know Washington and Oregon, yeah, uh, and and the East Coast. A lot of apples in New York, but um, wine tariffs on wine. Tariffs on uh, peaches. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of shit from California. And I wonder if Trump doesn't care. You know, if it was pecans, if it was from Georgia, maybe he would give a shit. Yeah, right, right. But I mean, he's he's just not thinking at all. I mean, this man is, and I think he's going crazy. I really think that he did like I think twenty four, twenty five tweets yesterday or something. It went, oh, really? tweet, it went tweet crazy. Okay. But not one about Stormy Daniels. Not one about Stormy Daniels. Not one about Putin's a fuck. You no. know. Um, boy, Stormy Putin, Daniels. Putin, no. Putin must give. He insult Stormy Daniels. Putin must give great blowjobs or something. I don't know. What, <laughs> Careful who you say that to. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't dare say that in Russia, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ivan Dmitrikosh. Huh? Ivan Dmitrovich. Yeah, Ivan Dmitrovich. Is that his name? Real name? No, his real oh. name is uh, Vladimir Vladimirovich Putin. Oh, really? It's VV oh. Putin. Okay. Okay. So it is. It is. It is uh, it's Vladimir. Yeah. Vladimir Putin. Okay. Vlad the Impaler for sure. Vlad the Impaler. So I mean, uh, uh, so you're you know you do your little uh, little act every now and then, and then you talk about politics and. Uh, 
So how do you parse this whole thing with what's going on now with, uh, uh, with our lovely, wonderful president? Well, I'm trying to keep up. And uh, so every week I, I use an overhead projector. And every week I, and you know, when you use the overhead projector, remember uh, the teacher always had the other sheet and, you know, the piece of cardboard for yeah. the slow reveal. Yeah. So I have like a line and then I, I drop it and then I drop it. And yeah. so I have this thing called March Madness. And this is, this is the shit that happened uh, this week, this month, just this month in, yeah. in March. Yeah, and and it keep it changes every every single week. It changes, yeah. so it's it's impossible to keep up. It really is. It's just it's ridiculous. Yeah, and and you don't know. I have to change my show every week. Well, you, the thing is, you've got a guy here who's totally unpredictable. You don't know what he's going to do next, and you don't know that he isn't going to change his mind about that the next day. There's no there's no consistency to any thinking. On, on Trump's part. No, and all the commentators say, well, Trump said this. It doesn't matter what he says. He'll contradict what he says the next sentence. It doesn't, they always, oh, uh, well, you know, he, he promised that he, it doesn't matter what he promised. Don't you <laughs> realize? It doesn't, he'll say whatever dribbles out of his mouth. He'll, the Democrats were, you know, oh, man, you know, the, the people at DACA should be pissed at the Democrats because they blew it. They blew the chair. What the fuck are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> and, and it doesn't matter what he says. Well, I mean, when it comes to things like the Amazon thing, he doesn't even. This is supposedly a guy who was supposed to. He always promoted himself as Mr. Monopoly. You know, he, he was, uh, if they had a Monopoly game, he would have liked to change it to a little Trump figure on the box, all right? <laughs> that he Get knew that he knew yeah. everything about m money. Now, I saw a documentary, people should watch it on Netflix. Uh, it's four episodes on Trump, and it basically deals with him, starts off with him in, in New York when he moves to New York and takes over, or tries to take over New York. Moves from Queens to Manhattan. Yeah. Yeah. And it de deals with all his business dealings. And then his running for president is the last episode. But his business dealings, and as you watch this and it's revealed, you see what a lousy businessman he was. <coughs> you know, his only successes were the Park Hyatt and Trump Tower, and the rest of it was going into debt and uh, not uh, paying your bills and uh, everything else. They mentioned, do they mention Merv Griffin? Because remember, Merv G Griffin cleaned his clock there. In, 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 uh, oh yes, Atlantic City. in Atlantic City, yeah. Because uh, Merv had what? Did he? Which one did he have? Oh Christ, I don't know. That was what late eighties. Yeah, yeah. I th I thought he was bankrupt after that. I thought Trump was bankrupt. Yeah, he was bankrupt after that. Well, what happened was he been, built the Taj Mahal uh, at a cost and borrowed money at a rate that he would have to make a million dollars a day out of there just to break even. Now he could do that. During high, during high season, during low season, ain't no way he was going to do that. And that's why he went bankrupt. He went bankrupt because from the very beginning, he didn't look at the, at the numbers. So what, 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 what Wharton school did he go to? The Hogwarton <laughs> school, maybe? The Hogwarton school? You know? <laughs> He went to the best school and learned all the best words. Yeah, 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 like fabulous. His father did the same thing. They showed his father, his father, it's going to be fabulous. It's going to be excellent. It's going to be terrific. It's going uh -huh. to be, you know, all the, he always uses all these uh, yeah, yeah. flowery phrases for terrific. These superlatives, yeah. Yeah, so that that's, you know, that's our, that's our guy. Uh, so what's it called on Netflix? It's just, I think it's called Trump uh, something... Uh, the rise of Donald Trump or something, but then at the end, the lettering goes down. <laughs> I'm trying to remember the name of the show, but the lettering literally slumps down on the title. Uh, and it, it, cool. But it, 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 they, they interview people who like him, too. You know, they didn't try to stack the deck here, but you can't stack the deck if you just look at what he did. He was a terrible, terrible businessman. <laughs> And everybody's going, well, I'm voting for him because he's a big businessman. Yeah, that's what they told you on The Apprentice. Yes, because you know? they wanted ratings. 
They you know, couldn't say this is a guy who bankrupted three casinos. He was good at getting a bunch of people <laughs> to go out on the street and try to sell coffee. You know, I mean, then you know, on The Apprentice. But he, it, it, otherwise, he didn't. He was a terrible, terrible businessman, and now we are stuck with this terrible businessman making trade deals. You know. Effect, affecting the stock market with like what he did to Amazon because Amazon stock dropped precipitously yesterday. Not that it doesn't, Bezos isn't still the richest man in the world, but you know. Yeah, it took over from Gates, right? Yeah. I mean, so you, who are you going to blame? Are you going to blame Bezos or are you going to blame the people who bought things at Amazon like me? You know, I buy everything. If I need band aids, I order them from Amazon. What I get that Amazon Prime and I get everything delivered for you know for free. Yeah, how can they do that? <laughs> well, they get they get a hundred bucks out of you a year for that, for a Prime. But you yeah, also you, you also get their TV yeah, stuff too. I don't know about you, but I ordered. Let's say the average delivery is five bucks. Yeah, you know, shipping and handling, mm -hmm. and uh, I order more than twenty things a year from Amazon. Oh yeah, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah, but you order them. That's the thing. They they've gotten you to order them, right? And now I'm I'm a sucker for their Echo stuff. You oh know? really? Oh yeah, I got one in the kitchen. Echo, set the timer for five minutes. You know, while I'm cooking something. Uh, Echo, add uh, such and such to the shopping list, and then I go to Costco and I bring up my shopping list on my Alexa app, and there are all the things I ordered. I wanted to go buy. Wow. Yeah. So. Good little invention. You know, and they were the first ones out there with it. They didn't steal it from somebody. You know, it was amazing. Just amazing. Like most like like Apple does or has. Oh yeah. If you got Apple if either you, invents or steals, you know. I have two of them. I have the Echo Spot with a little screen on it that can show videos and stuff on my bedside in place of my old clock radio. And I just say, uh, you know, uh, well, I say, I, I say Echo. I don't say Alexa because it, it might confuse it when somebody says, hey, Alex, you know. Right. So, right. so I have it. So I go Echo, um, um, uh, play me the, my, my news feed. And then they play me a video of uh, like Reuters uh, TV news okay. right on the little screen as I'm waking up in the morning. You know, it's, it's terrific. It's a terrific invention. But anyway. This is, the, this is the guy he wants to go after because he owns the New York uh, oh, uh, the Washington Post, and the Washington Post says nasty things about me. And Obama didn't say nice things about me at the correspondence dinner. And so, therefore, you know what I would do if I, it was like Back to the Future and I got to go to the, to, the, to the past and change something? I would find Obama just before he goes to the correspondence dinner and say, don't say anything about Donald Trump. And then everything would be different right now. Remember, remember the that, that famous shot of him watching it, and he was like this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, right. And his lips out. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he um, he was so he was. They say in this documentary, he was so upset by that he left early. And uh, he just after that wanted to get even with Obama. So everything he's doing now. And taking away from us is anything Obama had anything to do with. It's not based on any logic. It doesn't matter. It, uh, the next president, if there is a next president, uh, can reinstate stuff if we get our democracy back. Because he's slowly, slowly over time and behind the scenes, and we don't notice because this chaos, this chaos circus that's going on, that he uh, that he distracts everybody with, but uh, he's he's changing judges, he's changing uh, all sorts, everything. Um, yeah, uh, and you're right. Anything that Obama had anything to do with, especially environmental, but it's it's all the right. And the fact that the that the the, the right doesn't care about it. You know, <laughs> can you imagine? If Obama were caught having an affair with a porn star while his his first wife was pregnant, not his third wife, his first wife was pregnant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is you know, he gets a and the and the the religious right doesn't say a word about it. 
They, you know, oh, I, I guess it's okay. It's in the Bible. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you can cheat on your wife. It's in the Bible. <laughs> and then blah, blah, slept with Yeah, but then your wife also turned into a pillar of salt, okay? Uh, yeah, you know. So, I mean, uh, but I want to know what's with the religious right. They don't say a word about this. It's like, oh, it's okay. It's all right. It's okay. Don't pay no attention to the dog, you know. They, they've they abdicated any sort of uh, ability to to speak on any Democratic candidate ever, ever. Yeah. And Trump has, has, hasn't just lowered the bar. He buried the bar. You know, there is no bar anymore. You know, convicted felons. Uh, guys with face tattoos, you know, yeah. anybody, anybody can run for president. Well, I, I see how those people with face tattoos are still for him. Okay. <laughs> but I don't understand, for the life of me, how an average American can look at what this president is doing and say, that's my guy. You know, I mean, outside of the fact that you voted for him, and you don't want to say you were wrong in voting for him. No, people, people who voted for him. We're tired of politics, and it wasn't just Obama. It wasn't. It was George W. Bush. It was. Uh, it was uh, Clinton. It was George H. W. It was. It was probably every president since Reagan. They were just tired of the politics and how they would get promised anything, and then nobody would come through. And I heard one guy explain it, that he voted for a junkyard dog. He wanted someone to go in there. And just tear down everything, and that's what he wanted. And and they're happy. They're happy with it. Well, they thought that the problem was uh, Washington's uh, dysfunction, and the dysfunction in Washington was based upon just this this uh, uh, fight between the right and the left, the fight between the right and the left, which had been juiced up, ginned up by the press. Now, when he wants to go after the press, I wouldn't talk about them as fake news. I would talk the, about them as ginning stuff up and maybe making these two, the both sides of the aisle, not be able to get together because they've been so polarized by the press. Would, we, would you agree with that? Um, <clears throat> I think the, uh, the, uh, that Fox News has changed everything. I don't think there's, I don't think MSNBC is the pendulum swing for Fox News. I think Fox News is over here and, and MSNBC is over here yeah. with this being. But what I'm saying uh, is that the, the, pre the press is so polarized America in their reporting. I don't of think it. it's the press. I think it's, I think it's uh, America. Yeah. I, I, unless you call Rush Limbaugh the press. But you call you know, Rush Limbaugh all, the all, press? All in, uh, no. I'm no. A mouthpiece. No, I'm, I I'm not the me. press either. But anyway, uh, you know, I mean, what you've got to do is. Uh, you've got to realize that you don't solve the problem of bad politics in Washington by bringing in people who don't know what they're doing. <laughs> okay? You solve it by hiring people who are professional politicians who know what they're doing, but just vote for the right ones. You know? That does, yeah. That's, no. Everybody's got a different version of the right one. You know, but the problem, the problem is you bring in experts. And and these are experts. These are people who spent their entire life well, studying the subject. People don't understand. Especially economists. Yeah. You bring in three economists, three economists, and they're all wearing the same suit, and they all have the bad haircut, and they all have glasses askew. And you talk to three of the, the biggest experts in the field of economics, not just in America, in the world, and you ask them, mm -hmm. what's going to happen? And one guy will tell you we're headed for a depression, one guy will tell you we're headed for a boom situation, yeah. and the other guy will tell you, "Oh, we're right here in the middle." Those are the experts. Those are those are three guys who have studied this their entire exactly. life. Exactly. Exactly. But the thing is, you don't you don't hire your next door neighbor to do your plumbing. You hire a plumber. And the fact is that a professional politician knows how to represent your community in Washington D.C. And you don't but sell an am, send an amateur to do eyes. that. Huh? And here's where you get your false equivalency. You know, I mean, Trump lies about everything. Everything he lies about. He lies about, uh, he saw uh, Muslims celebrate 9-11. He never saw that. It never happened. He lies about uh, voting, uh, being against the war. He, no, he wasn't. He was in, 
it was in favor. We heard his voice say he was in favor. He lies about everything. And Hillary lied about Benghazi. And people see, see, she's the same thing. No, it's not. It's like this and this. It's yeah. like this. Can't you? Do you have no, no fucking perspective? It's what John Oliver calls people using whataboutism. Well, what about Hillary? Well, no, he, she, but she's not president. He's president now. So yeah, yeah. forget about what about Hillary or what about... 18 months later, they're still bringing up Hillary. Yeah, she hasn't even been seen. For all we know, no. they just well, disassembled no, no, no. her. You know? No, it's different. It's different if you were bringing up Obama because Obama was, was president for eight years and he, he determined some momentum. Yeah. But Hillary wasn't president for eight years. Exactly. You know? Hey, listen, I, uh, I I got a note from you yesterday saying you got to leave by uh, 25 of the hour, which is when we're recording this, uh, and because he, he's got to get to the Giants game. It's opening day for the Giants, oh, and you are a big Giants fan. For the Giants, it's a, it's a, it's a national holiday. As, as we call it in our house, it's Christmas. So <laughs> last night was Christmas Eve. Yeah. And we go down early. We have a couple of friends joining us. Yeah. Uh, we go down early, and there's a... A little soiree we attend, and and then we find our way up to our seats. Yeah. And I have a show tonight, so I can't I can't start drinking early. But otherwise, uh, I'd be toast by the fourth. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we love talking with them. We do so about once every three weeks, and it is an absolute distinct pleasure. Let's raise Pichon, our coffee the cups. The honor is mine. Let, let's, Mr. Alex no, Bennett, oh, no, the, you, uh, 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 it's mine. Here, let's have a cup of coffee. Clink, okay, clink. And then, mm, mm. ladies and gentlemen, that's Will Durst. Thanks, Will. Thank you, Alex. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is Gabby, the Great American Broadcast Network. Hey, oh, let me turn on my mic. Hi, hey, how are you? Welcome back. I love, I love having Will on. God, he's fun. He's fun. And he's bright. He's smart. He's a smart guy. We love smart guys, don't we? Yes, we do. We do, we do, we do. Anyway, my name is Alex Ben, and this is the, um, this is the, uh, uh, the ramble. And what we do is we turn on our, uh, our Skype lines. Here we go. Uh, there we go. And uh, we're going to hope that we get uh, 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 some people calling us tonight. We'll see who we get calling us. Uh, I uh, I had something happen to me today while I'm waiting for these calls to come that was just, I don't know, it was the best thing that's ever happened to me. <laughs> I'm out at Costco, and I'm com I come home, and I've got to lug all this stuff upstairs and everything, and all of a sudden I reach into my back pocket where my wallet is usually, and it's not there. And I can't think of what happened to it. I think I lost the wallet. And then, then I feel there's a big hole in the back pocket. And as soon as I'm starting to go into this panic that I have lost my wallet, there's a ring at the door, and it is a guy. And he says, is this your wallet? I said, yes. He says, I found it on the street. I, I said, what? He said, yeah, I found it on the street. And I looked inside, and I saw your address, and I, uh, I brought it up to you. And before I could, I, I said, thank you so much. And then he just darted down the stairs. Uh, and I didn't have time to think, hey, I should give him 20 bucks or whatever. And, um, but so I didn't get to do that. But how is that, that I lost my wallet on the street and somebody found it. And the minute I realized it was missing, the doorbell rings and it's him with the, with the wallet. Huh? huh? Take the cash? Uh, no. No, there was well, there, well, it was cash in the wallet. Actually, I keep it hidden, but no, all of it was intact. None of it was, you know, it wasn't like he darted downstairs because he took anything. See, this guy is a professional pickpocket, and when he realized that it, that the wallet belonged to you, he was afraid for his life. He, you know, he knew you had connections, and it, so he yeah. ran over and gave it back. That's Phil Meyer, by the way, in case you're wondering who that is. Uh, no, I, you know, um. I think it was it was the most fortuitous thing to happen to me in in years. I mean, I thought about what happened if I had lost that wallet. All the things that I would have to replace. Hmm? How'd you lose it? How'd I lose it? Uh, hmm. I there. I Marjorie bought me a pair of jeans, 
and they came from, I think, Amazon, and they were distressed. You know how they pre-distressed them? Sure. So they had holes in the pockets? They had a hole in the back pocket, and I figured, well, yeah, but they're not going to put a hole in the back pocket that is going to rip open a lot. They probably sew it up a little bit and whatever. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> and yeah. today it got big enough that the wallet fell right through it. It's amazing that people pay money for jeans that are worn out. She didn't know she was getting the worn out jeans. Okay, I'll have to hand her that. Uh, she sure. just we got it, and she said, "Oh, okay, so." I, well, you know, that's because Amazon is making all this money on the public's back by shipping through the post office, and the post office can't pay their bills. To begin you know, with, I do uh, not get anything from Amazon by the post office. I, I understand, and that's why I shipped you something, UPS, yes. which I could have done for half the price at the post office. Yeah, probably, <laughs> probably. See, the thing is that, uh, no, but I, uh, well, how fortuitous was that? I mean, I just, I thank, my, I thank my fucking lucky stars. Yeah. Now, the one other thing that you ought to do is you ought to make sure that all your credit cards are locked so that just in case. He wouldn't, guy, he, you, he, he didn't have time. He well, didn't, he, didn't look, he literally didn't have time. Take a picture with your phone of the credit card numbers. Yeah. Then what happens is you return the wallet and you say, he didn't oh, have John time. Found he, it. he didn't, I he did not fill. Let money. me tell you that it was up here so fast that he did not have time to do that. He had time right. to come. I think to begin with, he was wearing some kind of a uniform and I think he's our alternate postman is who I uh -huh. think it was. Uh, so you definitely, the, you know, the post office isn't really good at making good deals, so they have to make money on uh, the yeah, side. Okay, so let me worry about this now for the next. No, <laughs> I'm not even worried about that part of it. You yeah. Know. Well, uh, yeah, if he if he's a legitimate guy, then, uh, you know, that theory is probably out the door. I, I, but. And then he left going walking down the stairs, so that led me to believe that he was somebody that, you know, doesn't live in the apartment house, but, uh, or maybe he does, maybe he lives on the floor next to me. I would love to find him so I can throw him 20 bucks or something and thank him, you know, just, uh, you know. But I was so stunned at getting it back, I didn't have time to say, hey, let me give you something. I didn't have time it's, to think just, about just, that. Just think about this. The guy gets your credit card numbers, he returns the wallet. Mm -hmm. uh, you think everything is good because you're in possession of the wallet. Meanwhile, he's living it up down at the Ritz mm -hmm. uh, 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 with your credit card numbers yeah. because he's already – you know, sold them to, uh, yeah, all right, you know, all right, all right, all right. Just don't let me worry about that. Okay. <laughs> uh, we've been joined by Tim, by the way. So, uh, you know, I, I am, uh, on this wallet thing. I, I am so lucky that, you know, because when you have to go and then, you know, replace all these things and then top of that, not only have to replace them, but you then have to tell your, uh, uh, the people you do business with, here's my new credit card number. Absolutely. Uh, it is it is awful. Uh, I just had somebody buy 15 backpacks on Amazon with my credit card. And uh, so I uh, the shipment never came. I was mm -hmm. able to stop it and get Amazon to change all the stuff and credit me back. And uh, but in the meantime, I had my credit card company close that one and issue me a new card. Yeah. So. Now, now, you, now you're having to go online to Amazon and change your card and go to so-and-so and change your card. Here's the other thing that you have to do. And, it, it, you know, I mean, that's what I've decided I'm going to do. I'm going to go get myself a small little, like, kind of billfoldy thing, right? Yeah. I'm just going to yeah. carry one credit card. I don't need my driver's – well, I'm, I don't really need my driver's license. Yes, you do. Because sometimes you go to present a credit card and they want to see ID. Okay, so I'll take the, I'll take the driver's license. Okay, and and that's about it. I can leave everything else back home. All the other credit cards, all the other, even my uh, my uh, uh, medical cards. I don't need to carry that's them around true. with me. I don't use them except when I go to a doctor. Right. Well, uh, what I do is uh, basically the same thing. I have one credit card I keep in the wallet, mm -hmm. one debit card. Uh, the Costco thing and uh, a company credit card mm -hmm. and my driver's license and yeah. and that's it. So I know that if I lose it, I have the minimal amount of things to do. And if I have ten credit cards, then I gotta pay each one every month 
uh, you know, well, what I use this one on this and I use that one on that. So I just, I leave it alone. I use it, then I'll switch to another card so that they're always active. Yeah. Uh, hey, Alex. Yeah. Yes, if, if, if you live in a big city, shouldn't you be wearing a wearing a, a money belt? No. What, what? You don't think you need? What do you mean, one of those fanny pack thingies? Oh, well, no, it goes underneath your clothes. It's kind of like a concealed weapon. Oh, no, yeah. yeah. What You know what they use in Europe, you know, so you don't get pickpocketed? They have these belts that fit under your shirt. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can put your passport in it. And, uh, and yeah, I did just check the uh, the dark web, and everything in your wallet is on sale on the dark yeah, web. Yeah, okay. At good, this time. Good. <laughs> hey, the guy didn't look a little Russian, did he? Uh, no, hey, I checked no. my doorknob in the morning. It, it's impossible for Alex to get hacked. Nobody can spell his name. You know, well, but yeah. they know where he lives now. Yeah, See, but, that's the bad thing. But but how fortuitous was this? I mean, the thing was literally on the sidewalk. Wow. I, and this I guy, had that happen to me about five years ago. And the, did you get your wallet back? Well, I, actually, six years ago, I found somebody else's wallet. Mm-hmm. And, and the, found a way to, through the bank to get a hold of him and turned it over to him. Didn't expect a reward. And then I lost my wallet. And I panicked just like you did. And it was on the street. It was on a sidewalk. And a year later, somebody found mine and gave it to me. You want to hear? And the, I didn't give him a reward. You want so to, that's karma. You want to hear the story about the worst New Year's I've ever had? Was uh, we were in a car, Marjorie and I, in a cab going somewhere, and she said, "Here, carry carry my pack here, carry my bag here, and, and put it in the front seat with you." When I left the cab, I forgot the bag, and in the bag were the keys to her apartment. So now we can't we can't figure out anything. We haven't got any way to find out where the cab is and so on. So we go back to her place, and we call a locksmith. And this is New Year's Eve, right? What do you think a locksmith's going to charge you just to break the lock on the door? $500. Try 800 Wow. And then to Whoa. reinstall a new lock, yeah. right, uh, it was going to cost another 400 So I, I paid $1,200. And the next day, the cab driver calls her and says, I found your, your bag. Would have been cheaper. We could have just it. gone back to my place, forgotten <laughs> about that, and then worried about it the next morning, and I would have saved $1,200. Next time she tells you to carry the bag, you just say no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd never carry the bag now anyway for that exact yeah. reason. Cause it's going to be my fault, you know. But, I mean, it was, uh, um, uh, I thought it was so fortuitous that this happened today. I just, like, was startled that I reached, I couldn't find it. And then as I'm trying to figure out where I put the wallet, the doorbell rings. And it's the guy. He oh. found it on the street. So you had minimal stress because you had just discovered that Yes, but you know what it. I've got is this agita thinking, what would have happened had I lost that wallet because, you know, this hole in the pocket, which girlfriend said she would sew up weeks ago and she never did. You know, she hmm. says, you're going to lose your wallet there. And I said, no, it's not going to open up. They don't distress these jeans so they break apart. I'm wrong, man. This is a big gaping fucking yeah, like- hole. What? Did you also worry that you could remember everything you, that you had in your wallet? And you might forget something. Oh, there's always going to be something, yeah. Yeah, that, that's hun- another. It reminds me of the routine that uh, Carl, um, the great comedian, did um, about Green. stuff and how yeah, you have about all stuff. your stuff. Yeah, the George with, Carlin. Yeah. Yeah, George Carlin. Yeah. Uh, and then he goes to some island on a boat and he. He has like three or four things left. I, 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 and I keep a $100 bill in there in case I, I need it, you know, like an emergency. But I'm taking that out of there now. And I think what I'm going to do is maybe just not even a bill for a little rubber band with the credit card, my driver's license, and uh, uh, one other thing. What else would I need? I don't need yeah, anything else. Those metal wallets. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what Trump carries. He carries a blank NDA. You never yeah, know. It, it, no matter where he goes. It better, yeah, better he's got an NDA. Just pull it out and... He, 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 he has well. one. He has one, in fact, in his wallet in lieu of condoms. So, you know. Well, yeah, because that's his idea of protected sex as an NBA. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but it didn't work, did it? It, was, no. it looks like there's a leak in it. I don't yeah, know. it looks like there's not, a leak in it. They're, uh, they're, they're not going to court. They're going to arbitration. 
No, but, but the fact that they filed Actually, it in court to say that uh, that she broke the agreement means they're saying that what she said was true. Yeah, well, he he, he uh, can only be sued document. for something that's true. Uh, 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 Trump wants to um, wants to have it tried by Judge Judy, uh, <laughs> who he for a short time considered the considered for this he considered uh, Judge Judy for the Supreme Court. I mean, given his record now of who he's hiring for stuff, it's going to be Judge Piro. Hmm? Judge that Judge uh, Piro. Piro. Or it is. Oh, that Piro. that that cunt. Well, I like her too. Oh, you like her too? She's yeah, I like Judge Judy. She's a piece of work, that bitch. Yeah. Yeah. And I you and I'm I, I, I'm being nice by calling what? her a cunt because guys call each other cunts in England as a the oh, com, not ca, for camaraderie, you know. But um, what, what yeah, Mary is watching everybody on Twitter and social media think it's a good idea to put our military on the border. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people that think that's a good idea. I, You're going to pay these guys. I would like to ask uh, Mad Dog what he thinks of this idea of taking his troops and diverting them to be a human wall along the border. He actually, I think, uh, was it Mattis or was it? Uh, uh, there was two guys that commented in the past that they did not want uh, troops. What, what? I think John Kelly's came out yeah, and made a Kelly, statement that Kelly and one other guy. I don't know if it was. It might have been Mattis. I think it, I think it was Mattis. You know, was, and somebody said the other day that the trouble with Trump is he has no grasp of technology. That actually, you could watch that border without a wall just using drones. You know that there are a lot of other ways to handle this situation than to build a goddamn fucking wall. And now sure to divert our terrible. troops. I mean, are we going to say to somebody who's been standing along the border? Thank you for your service. Now, come on. You know, and then what did you do during your break? We went to Taco Bell. You know, I mean, come on. What do other countries do with their military and their borders? Uh, don't they have no. military? Other countries no, too. no, Jeff. Jeff says no. In, in Europe, it used to be where you always had a stop at, at, at right. every different chain right. from one country to the other. Now you just drive through them. Yeah, because it's yeah, all it's because all the it's all the EU. Yeah. So uh, uh, from what I remember, let's say you're in Italy, they had the uh, four different kinds of military, and one of them uh, worked the borders. There was the uh, I forget the name in Italian. Well, there's a there's a board there was a there was a border force, but these were people who manned the the, the way stations and things like that. Just like you have you have them right now. You have the border patrol. Right. Well, you have border patrol, but now. But that's the equivalent of our border. border that, what you're talking about was the equivalent of our border patrol. Yeah, but yep. it didn't let anybody through unless you had the proper documentation. The, the, yeah. the scary part, this is all part of his plan to turn us into a police state. They want ICE to be part of the uh, Here we go. IC. Okay, this is your, by the, the way, uh, by the way, this is your one um, um, conspiracy theory for tonight. <laughs> well, this is a fact. This no, no, a no, fact. no, 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 no. It's a conspiracy theory. Okay. <laughs> they want ICE to be part of the intelligence community so they can access all this top secret stuff and all the espionage stuff. And uh, they already gave the police more powers to uh, uh, to take people's property and stuff. And they want to they want central control of all the local police forces. That's why the push on the well, the I, you, know, you know, you know what I, you know what I, I dislike intensely about this whole idea of a wall and the fact that there are some yutzes out there, some some you know bozos who think it's a good idea, don't realize that a wall that keeps people out also keeps us in. Right. Not unless you want to go to Mexico. They're not worried about us going to Mexico and staying. Uh, you know, uh, the Mexicans are. What do you mean? I uh, I was talking to a girlfriend tonight that if we were younger, we'd probably be leaving this country by now. Yes, uh, uh, we, Patrick, I, I Patrick, friend, Patrick, 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 Patrick has Mexico his hand. Patrick has his hand up, and so does Jeff. So let's go to Patrick sure. first, and then Jeff. Well, I mean, you know, that, it's true. You keep it in. However, um, try to get into Canada. Uh, if you've got a DUI, your your friend, uh, who is it? Uh, Ruben. Ruben. Yeah, Ruben. 
look at the problem he had. And I mean, you know, it it you can't get into Canada uh, just as easily as it can be, and you can't get into Mexico easy either. I mean, you go through your checkpoint, and why is it so fucking hard for people in our country to just accept that, that we should have something at least similar? To like Canada, well, I mean, again, yeah, but Canada Ruben does. Wait, wait, wait a minute, but can, you're not allowed yeah. in. But Canada, I, 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 yeah, wait a minute, hold on, hold on a second. Canada didn't ha doesn't have a wall. They have never considered a wall. Got mounties. But, but they enforce their border stuff. The problem we have in our country, just like with have, gun control have, and a lot of other things, we don't enforce. Wait a minute, have you ever gone now. through one of those borders, Patrick? I'm going to be going in January and July, and my company said that if you have a DUI, first of all, they said check your passport, make sure it's still good, and then they said if you have a DUI, you can't get in. So there's, uh, I figure that out of the four or five hundred guys that own the stores that I own, uh, maybe two hundred of them won't be able to go to the convention. <laughs> <laughs> But, but no, the point I'm making, Patrick, is I've gone th it, it, I've gone through those border po po points. Uh, uh, something that a lot of people don't do if they live in the northern part of the United States as much as people who live where I've lived. Uh, and I got to tell you, coming across the border, sometimes there's a traffic jam taking an hour uh, trying to get through. It's not like they're not trying to stop stuff, you know. Um, well. That Canadian border was so porous that one of the uh, biggest, uh, uh, what do they call us, uh, terrorists from the United States, Abby Hoffman, was able to uh, sail right in. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I was up there with him, and he just, uh, we got in a boat, and we sailed right up. Uh, you can go right across yeah. the Canadian border in a boat. On Nixon's list. It's a good thing you don't have a DUI. By the way, it's not that easy. It's, it is easy to get into Canada. If you want to, you get a boat, take it up to St. Lawrence the seaway and there's this little place you go up it's just an inlet and you're in canada yeah. you know nobody's there looking at your passports or anything like that or saying do you have a dui but if you're going to stay there for any amount of time it takes a bit of doing you know it yeah. takes a bit of doing uh, uh you know uh, the, well, uh, the thing is, I think if we're going to spend money on a wall, we put it up over, uh, 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 along Canada's border uh, because I don't want those people coming down here. You know, it's with their with they they pronounce the words funny and uh, they have, have. Have you ever eaten at a Horton's place? One of those? Uh, uh, no. Was it Tim Hortons? Tim Hortons? Yeah, the it's, Canadian it's ugly, contingent. Ugly, ugly food. Well, the Canadian contingent. Uh, has a separate area during our conventions, uh, and they bring Tim Hortons coffee. Oh boy! And I got to tell you something. I like strong coffee. This stuff tastes like dirt. Uh, I think they mix it with uh, uh, saltpeter or something, uh, because okay. um, I, I don't uh, I don't care for the Tim Horton coffee. Now, what happens? What happens if all of a sudden war breaks out somewhere and we need troops? Are we going to take them away from the wall to go to that? hot spot or are we going to keep them there no oh, i think and, we need to keep and, them there and, 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 really we need to keep them there do you know this is not what a lot of people signed up for the military for it was to oh, the, get what they know. get hey on the west coast during world war ii mm -hmm. uh they have these bunkers over in san francisco yeah uh and uh, in the marin headlands and they were there to observe and protect the coast from the japanese and the germans uh hey, alex you, wait, you a minute, wait, minute, wait a minute, Phil, wait a minute, wait a minute, Phil was talking, let him finish what he was saying. So uh, anyway, they were there and troops were assigned to them. So in, in times of war, the, you, you got to protect uh, your coast, you got to protect your borders. And if your border is porous and, and the enemy can get in, uh, you, you need to send troops there. We've mm -hmm. done it before. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one other thing I just wanted to mention that... Uh, Harry S. Truman uh, had uh, all the people in his White House sign a document that said that they pledged their allegiance uh, to the United States. And uh, uh, so, you know, a, a that, few... That's not an NDA. They, they didn't pl pledge allegiance to him, did uh, they? 
uh, to Harry S. Truman or to uh, no, they pledged the United States that they weren't but communists. Trump wanted so. his people to pledge allegiance to him. I don't not think to so. the United you States. You know, you're doing uh, you're, you're indulging in a whataboutism that I'm very familiar with, and that was the that time of the communist scare in America, and yeah. you really can't compare this to that. Uh, it, that was an entirely different kind of paranoia that America had that was just as embarrassing, if not more so, than what's happening right now. Yeah, I, I mean, as a country, we've done uh, several things. We, we put Japanese in internment camps. Uh, we've uh, uh, watched our coasts to see if we were going to be attacked. Uh, you know, we, uh, we've signed pledges uh, of loyalty. So there's, there's, you know, all of these things that we're talking about now in the Trump administration have happened before and continue to happen. And uh, it's just we don't like him doing it or you don't like him doing it. Uh, well, uh, what, what, this reminds putting troops on the border is just as bad as the internment camps. And we should be met, uh, spending money on our cyber warfare because Russia is already into our grid. They're already into the, the, the universities. They're into the corporations. I say let more Mexicans. Uh, I, I say let more Mexicans in and let's deport some rednecks. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, pa Patrick. Oh wait a minute. Jeff had something he wanted to say earlier, right, Jeff? Yeah, so uh, one time I went to Texas, and it was very uh, difficult to uh, drive. Uh, I forget what state I was in, but uh, I get there and the police were there and they're stopping everybody and they. And they were asking me where I was going. Can I see your driver's license or whatever? And then the cop says to me, he says, do, do you have a gun? And I said, no. And he goes, oh, well, here's one for you. You got to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> I gave you one. Yes, Patrick, you had your hand up. Yeah, I, I think putting uh, U.S. military on the border is stupid. Uh, we've got a border patrol. That's what they're there for. That's what they're trained for. United States military, whether it's the Marine, the Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, they have their specialty. They should be around the world and on bases here in the United States. The border is not where they belong. Okay. Unless, we are, unless we are at a state of war that's similar to World War II where we would need to watch the borders, there's no need for it. I mean, just enforce the laws we have with the border. The border. And by, by the way, some of those border crossings, some of those areas where they cross the border are so wild. The people die walking. Oh, yeah. You know, so, I mean, in, in and of itself, that's a natural wall and a natural barrier. The Mexicans are allowing this caravan full of children that is being led by a church. Well, well to begin with, you're 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 you're, you're, you're wrong, 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 Phil. Wrong, 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 wrong. Yeah, to begin with, they're not. You're saying Mexicans. You think the only country in South America is Mexico? A they lot of these people Mexico. are. The, these caravans are originating in Honduras. Right, but there's four Mexican cities so far that have welcomed these guys, and uh, from what I understand, and one in, one in California, I might add. Uh, yeah, San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> no, but as they come through, yeah. uh, it, it said that they were welcoming welcoming this caravan. But I was also uh, informed that this caravan was was full of children, and it was actually a um, a uh, a church group. That uh, was sponsoring the uh, the movement of these people. No, oh, uh, that's terrible, isn't it? To the border. That's terrible. Do, and do, I, do you I'm know why they're so, coming, Phil? Why are they yeah, coming? I don't think they want to cross the border. I think it has to do with some sort of either protest or celebration. That you know, they, uh, some of them want asylum because they're being killed in their home country. That's correct. Did you see? Did you see? The, are, did, did you see the interview with some some uh, younger people? who were uh, going to be deported, and, and they said, we don't want to go back because if I go back, I'm going to be killed because I, uh, I left there to get away from my uh, boyfriend or something who was part of one of these, these groups, and they, now they say if I ever come back, they're going to kill me. So we're sending, we're sending, we're sending, hold on, we're sending these, some of these people back to certain death. And in fact, if you think that's wrong, we have done so, and those people have gone back, and within a year, they were dead. Well, yesterday there was a news report of a family man who was an illegal, 
and he was dropping his child off at school. Uh, ICE picked him up, and uh, they were going to deport him. Hey, would that it be an happy. ICE pick? Would that be an ICE yeah. pick? Was yeah, an ICE, ICE pick, pick, yeah. Uh, they picked him up, and uh, they were going to deport him. But it seems as though uh, he was able to make a case uh, that uh, his life was in danger if he went back, and uh, they're leaving him here. Uh, although his wife was an American. Uh, you know, it was just on last night's news. Well, anyway, uh, I saw some interviews with people who said that they, one guy didn't want, they showed an old interview with him. And he didn't want to go back because he was afraid of getting killed because he had t turned in people and so on. Mm -hmm. They s sent him back anyway, and within a year he got murdered. Well, it's pretty lawless down there. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, where is our sense of compassion? You know, where is this, where is this give us your, your you know, your... Well, that's a poem. Poor, well, you know, nevertheless, we put it on the Statue of Liberty. It's like part of our welcome it. sign. Okay, Phil? Yeah, well. You know, give us your tired, your poor, your huddled death, masses no. yearning to breathe free. You well, know? if you if you look at Brazil, for instance, the current president of Brazil, I think his name is Lulu, uh, he's being uh, he's being charged, and he's probably going to be in jail, but he is, he is ahead in the election. And the guy that's running against him mm -hmm. uh, was a former uh, Supreme Court justice in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's losing. The guy that's the president is winning. And he's, he's going he's gonna to go to jail. <laughs> you know, this is the yeah. kind of countries that these people live in and allow. Uh, we, I could start talking yeah. about the kind of country we live in, but we'll get to that in a bit. Pa Patrick. <laughs> I think Phil will agree with me on this. You know, maybe if all of those people that are coming from the bo through the border would then divert themselves up into New York and see Ellis Island and then go through Ellis Island, then we would be more amenable to give us your poor and all of that because they will have... Wait a minute. Nobody, nobody, goes, I, nobody goes through Ellis Island anymore. Yes, not since the 20s. My 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 grandmother and my father came through Ellis Island, and uh, my grandfather my grandfather I think went the other way around with the other son, and went through to Mexico. San Francisco to set up a, a, a home. So that the, when, once they came to Ellis Island, they could say we have a family in San Francisco. My husband is there. He's you know he's earning a living, and he, he we have a home. And so they then, the average, day, the average stay at Ellis Island, a lot of people think, oh, they were there for weeks. You know, they watched The Godfather, right? But no, it was like maybe a day and a half tops. Hmm. Or you were, if you didn't do it in a day and a half, they turned you around and sent you home. You know? My great-grandfather came to this country through Ellis Island. His name was originally spelled M-I-E-R. Mm -hmm. When he got off the boat, the guy wrote down M E Y E R. Yeah. He said thank you very much, <laughs> and 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 went to the next line. <laughs> well, my family, my family changed their name when they came through as immigrants from Schwarzman to Cherney, because they wanted a more anglicized name, uh, so that they, you know, there wouldn't be a prejudice or whatever. But uh, once they see, saw there wasn't a problem, they knocked did away with that idea and it was back to that impossible name to spell. Yes, Patrick. They they, they changed our name too. Yeah. Yeah, you know, a lot of people change their name. Uh, yes, uh, Patrick. Yeah, and, I, and then I, Jeff. I, Jeff. My grandparents on both sides um, mm -hmm. had come in through Ellis Island. And my mother's um, mother's uh, parent, they changed their last name. Yeah. Because it was just so fucking hard to spell. And it was, they just, at Ellis Island, they just shortened it for them. And they... Much like uh, Phil's great grandpa said, thank you very much, and they just moved on, and that was the way that they spelled their name from then on. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jeff. Thank you. That's fine. Yeah. Jeff, you, uh, you've got your hand yeah. up. Yeah. My uh, grandfather and grandmother and three sons uh, came to the United States through Ellis Island. Uh, my grandfather, though, he... He was concerned that, that he had a beard and everything, and he looked too European. So he shaved his beard off. No, oh, really? On the ship. Oh, really? And when he got there, they looked at his passport and his face, 
and they kicked him out and said, go back. So you had a grow beard? Oh, yes. You, you, I think you mentioned that once before. Probably. Yeah. yeah. And the reality is he went back, and here's my grandmother with three kids having yeah. a run the country by herself, so to speak. Uh, Amazing <laughs> story. No, but these, these are the now you're not allowed to have a mustache if you want to come in. No. <laughs> no. Oh, no, that's if you want to work in the White House. I'm but sorry. if you're gay, you have to have a beard. See, yeah. there's a joke there. There's a joke there. I just pulled a joke. Well, Bob, where's, your, where's your drum set? I'll tell you, my, my best joke of the day was with Durst. When I started talking about Trump, which we got to get into this whole thing about how he's bullied the, the, uh, the stock market. Uh, and, and if it were you or me doing the same thing, we'd probably get arrested, okay? It's, it's called security fraud. It's called security fraud, and that's about what he committed in the last couple of days. But let me, before we get to that, I just said, you know, we think he's the biggest, best businessman in the world. Where did he go to school? The Hogwarton's School of Finance? See, the Hog uh, Hogwarts. Yeah, yeah. He didn't graduate, though. <laughs> but he didn't uh, graduate. Book, uh, uh, I don't know where he got his... At Hogwarts. Hogwarts, wasn't Hog it? Hogwarts you see, yeah. is the name of the school, a uh, right. fine institution that uh, Harry, Potter, Harry Potter went to. Okay. Well, when business school was very new back then, it wasn't very good back when he went. Wharton wasn't very good? Wharton wasn't very good, and nobody remembers really him being there much. He wasn't <laughs> in any, any, any special activities. Uh, it's you know, he could have done it by proxy. No, he was volunteering all the time, feeding the homeless. Yeah. Anyway, oh, that. You're the, right. the point is that um, that um, um, in the last couple well, of we days, we need to get our own show. <laughs> in the last couple of days, he did something which is, as you say, would amount to, in a lot of cases, security fraud. And that is, let's say you want to ruin somebody's value in the stock market and you do something that does that that's against the law okay i think he had a legitimate gripe no he didn't have a legitimate gripe because no wait a minute, wait a minute to begin with phil the reason he doesn't like amazon is he doesn't give a shit about amazon he hates jeff bezos because he owns the washington post and the washington post has gone after his ass well, there's a, there's a, there is one reason he hates Amazon also, Alex, and it, there was an article in New York Times. His real estate in New York City, a lot of the brick and mortar is lost value, mostly because of all these online places like Amazon. And it's it's he's lost $400 million in the value of his real estate holdings. He holds that against Amazon and similar companies, too. Yeah, but, but let me let me say that what he did... Uh, 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 hurt Amazon stock yesterday to where the stock market dumped about, uh, I think it wound up 450 points down. Okay. Yep. Yep. And uh, it was because of those, two, it was a direct result of those tweets. Uh, and also because of his, uh, uh, of the fact that the Chinese have decided that they're going to um, uh, put import tariffs on our stuff. Like mm -hmm. about a third of the crops that leave the United States and go to China in wheat they are going to put a 35% tariff on them. Yeah, on the 30 cents worth of stuff that we send over there. The 30 cents? No, we send a third three, of... A, three a thir the third of most farms, a third of their output goes to China. And we're not Plus, getting enough money for it. It's only $3 billion that they're talking about. Well, that's the, you're listening to the figures that they give you. There are probably <laughs> other figures that are higher than that. But the fact is I heard farmers saying... This is going to really fuck us over. We got a hand to mouth existence as it is already. And if we can't sell this stuff to the Chinese or if we sell it to them, we have to pay a 35 percent tariff. This is not going to fly. We're going to be we're going to be out of business. What's it called when one company has a monopoly on uh, on the business uh, uh, when one company is yeah. in totally in control, it's it's, it's called monopoly. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's called monopoly. You think that, uh, you're, 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 you're thinking of antitrust. Well, you're that thinking of antitrust, antitrust, but monopoly yeah. is antitrust. Antitrust. So what? What you're? Uh, if you look at it the other way, what Trump is doing is he's uh, preventing uh, Amazon from getting in a position where uh, you know they're they're going to have a monopoly on on the uh, online business they're mm -hmm. putting other 
uh, competition out because of their size. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, and when you look at the other thing that he's talking about, which is the post office, the post office Lo- lost uh, eight hundred million on sixty-nine. They're, they're not losing money, Phil. Well, they're wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I know what you're going to say, and let me let me say it and, for and you. Do the retirement. Uh, the, the retirement. No, no, that, that, no, no. Forget about any of that. Forget about but any that's of that. Of course, forget the about any of that, Phil. Yeah. The post office, like anybody else, and I've told you this before, bids for the business of Amazon. But they bid, bid, they, bid. Wait a minute. A it's not illegal. They are trying to get Amazon's business. Amazon has the option of never sending through the post office if they don't want to. Wait, a minute, let me look, finish. Let me okay. finish. They yeah. they have the option of never being able to sell uh, to s- send by uh, the post office. So the post office has to come back with a decent enough offer on their services that they will make them part of the component because, like. Uh, they also do use UPS. They also use FedEx. They primarily use UPS and USPS. Now, here is a fact for you, Phil, and you can take it to the bank. The post what office, do you know what the largest profit center is for the post office? Um, those Amazon. funny-looking stamps, no, the special no, stamps. No, no, <laughs> Tim just said it. Amazon. That is their biggest, pro- wait a minute, that is their biggest profit center. Without it, the post office would be losing money hand over fist. Well, well, what's it, it, Phil should understand this as a businessman. You take, you have lost leaders. You know what a lost leader is? Yeah, but right, your Phil? lost leader can't be your... Yeah, wait, let me finish, let me finish. Amazon business is covering uh, such a tremendous amount of overhead that the, the, the that's expenses they're going to have anyway, that they can make more money on their other business that's not Amazon because Amazon covers so much of the overhead. That's how it works. Well, okay. what Trump wait a minute, wait a minute. Renee, 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 Renee and, has. And like Trump said, okay. no tax dollars going to the post hey, office. Renee not. has her hands up. Her hand up. Okay. <laughs> so hi guys. So number one, the first issue is is this is the first pass that Trump is going to make in regards to the privatization of the United States Post Office. Number two, this also what he's doing is beating up on Amazon because it, which only helps Walmart. So I'm trying to think that he's trying to level that playing field because Amazon blew by Walmart and now Amazon or Walmart's trying to play catch up. But the only one of the only ways to do that is to start telling us saying all these nasty things about I Amazon. I think his main reason is his hard on for Jeff Bezos. Period. You know, it, it doesn't make any sense to do what he's doing. And the, oh, the last No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second, Renee. You're trying to uh, 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 associate uh, sense with the, Donald Trump and anything that he does. I, I mean, I'm have tired. you have you read no. have you read his have you read his tweets for the last couple of days? They were like yesterday. There were like 24 of them, and they were absolutely fucking insane rants. Right. And, and they were all false. So it's just like somebody took his thing away while they were bashing him over the hooker and the yeah. porn star. And now somebody gave it back to them. The other thing I was going to say about Amazon really quickly was it was your responsibility during the Obama administration to change your tax request with Amazon. And what was happening is nobody was paying their sales tax in, in the state of California. Everybody got pissy. It was your, it was the owner, it was the buyer's responsibility to go into Amazon, click that box saying, I want to pay the taxes for my area, and then Amazon would have rolled that up and taken care of it. If you didn't do it, it's your shit. Amazon, Amazon has to pay taxes wherever they have a business. And I, I pay, ta- pay, pay tax. I pay tax. Wait I pay sales tax. Everything they ship. Yeah, they, right. I pay. Sa- it, it, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I pay sales tax for Amazon. Didn't used to have to in the very beginning, but then they found that they had to, and I, hey, I went ahead and I kept doing it. But what's going to happen uh, if they, if they, if he wants to try and make it more difficult for Amazon to ship, they're going to pass yeah. that cost on to me. They're not going to pass that cost on to Donald that. Trump. Yeah. Didn't yes. you hear Amazon? Let me tell you this. Wait a minute. You didn't Amazon have your hand up, but Patrick, Patrick does. Oh. Rules are rules. Oh. <laughs> yes, Patrick. I, the, the big problem I have is I don't write 
the president, regardless of who it is, putting his nose into private business and as, as a conservative uh, and a free market conservative at that, mm -hmm. look, um, there are still other businesses that are online. Until Walmart goes out of business or is close to and, he, and Target and all these other ones, I'm not that concerned about Amazon. I think it's up to Walmart and Target and some of these other retailers or even Costco to put themselves in a position to compete because that's what free market is, it's competition. And right now, Amazon is leading, it's just like with computers, with Dell computers versus Apple versus whatever versus whatever. And it's the same thing and I don't like the president getting involved at all. It's just like the president getting involved in legal cases, uh, it, it it taints everything, and it, it just and and if it doesn't literally change anything, it just does not pass the smell test. Stay the fuck out of the private stuff. Okay, uh, we right. got we got Phil and then uh, Jeff. All right, and then I'm, I'll ago. go next. Okay. That. Two, two days ago, Amazon announced that they are losing money on sh shipping on the small items and that they're going to raise the price that if you bundle the small items and you get a $25 order, then the shipping will uh, be lower or free. Just real quick, Alex talked about that, what, three or four weeks ago? Uh, Did this you have that whole yesterday. conversation was, about it? That's not new. Okay. And it makes sense. Did you raise your hand, Renee? No, I'm just All planning. right. Then sh and then zip it. So anyway, <laughs> so anyway uh, they, they announced that, and you know the twenty-five dollar uh, uh, amount. So things are changing. They're going to raise the prices. Whether Alex was ahead of the uh, the wheel or not on this, I don't know. But this is what I heard two days ago, and uh, uh, um, that's it. Yeah. Uh, to begin with, you're um, kind of. Um I, I, you know, I, I don't know what they're going to do with that. I do know that their what was their three two day shipping is now really realistically three day. They've changed a lot of things, and you know the fact that I can order a box of band aids for a dollar and they ship them to me, you know. But on the other hand, I turn around and buy more expensive stuff too. Now, Jeff, Patrick, uh, you were talking about including. Uh, cars that you didn't like the idea about the president trying to uh, make changes in, in automobiles. Did you feel that Obama did that uh, with Chrysler by helping them? Honestly, I would have rather have seen GM <laughs> fail and Chrysler and wh whoever fail because that's part of the, the, the free market system. I don't like the idea that um, we we gave loans to those companies so that they could um, prop themselves up when, in fact, if they were meant to fail, they were meant to fail. Yeah, but they ended up surviving and thousands and thousands of people kept, kept their jobs and not just the people who worked for Chrysler, but all the suppliers and and, 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 you know, people made tires and whatever else. Uh, and they ended up paying the government 100% back. Is that I, I, okay. I, I don't that. think that would have happened if we weren't in headed down the tubes in a recession. I think, Patrick, because we didn't see him do it at any other time, that he wouldn't have gotten into any of the private sector bullshit. But he had to because we were headed towards a really bad recession, if not a depression. So I think it was required at that point. But I agree with Patrick. How about, okay, okay. How about the clunker by uh, Ellen? <laughs> well, now let's go to Jeff, uh, 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 Tim. Well, real quickly, I said, uh, I got a hold of Jack, uh, Jeff Bezos, and I gave him the perfect, his next move should be to buy Twitter and terminate uh, Trump's access to it. Can you imagine what the world would be like if Trump wasn't on Twitter? Can you imagine? 
That's good. I, I would. That would be a great <laughs> sitcom. Well, I love. I, I love how Twitter Twitter up the amount uh, up the amount of uh, characters you could use to what two forty now. So he Something. could say more. He, with, it's with, scary. Hey, you know what I did today? I had to, for medical reasons, mm -hmm. uh, take Facebook off my phone. Uh, what's happened is the tendon in my left thumb from scrolling in Facebook uh, is sore, and I, I'm and I'm probably going to have to get a shot or something to uh, you know to deal with it because it hurts. I'm sorry, you're blaming Facebook for something. I'm, get, I'm getting blanket. cramps in both my hands, and part of it is from holding phones and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and the Facebook. other part is from jerking off, but I won't discuss that. Okay. I, I take the Facebook and I and I scroll through it with my left th thumb and it's and now all of a sudden I've got like tendonitis in my left thumb. So I said, that's it. No more Facebook. Uh, I just have the messenger. And, uh, you know, if I want to see the Facebook, I can go on the computer or something and use the mouse. But yeah, so I, I abused myself with Facebook so badly that now I hurt. <laughs> so, so now, now you hurt. Something and that means hurt. a completely different thing from a 14-year-old boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, not, he now calls it thumb book. Yeah. Hey, is this, that's thumb book, eh, boss? Yeah, that's a thumb book. <laughs> that's a thumb book. Did you hear that Facebook had a bigger leak than they said that was? And that I'm not sure Facebook's going to make this jump. Is my hey, guess good 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 Wait a minute, wait a minute. I got a letter from Equifax. <laughs> it's oh, a little late stuff. now, isn't it? Yeah, telling you that you've been hacked. <laughs> I've been Are hacked, and they're giving me six months of uh, free mm -hmm. monitoring. But oh, great, free monitoring on months. some on an insecure hey, system. Yeah. Do you yeah. Uh, do you shop at Saks Fifth Avenue or Lord and Taylor? Because they're the they're the last ones that just got hacked. Yeah, uh, quite a while ago, and they were they had been into them for a year. And they got employee records too. That's why I'm talking about the cyber war. And that was the Russians, I believe. It was they, a Russian they, uh, they company. Gordon Taylor. I believe so. Do they want purses. <laughs> Saks Fifth Avenue and Gordon Taylor are owned by a Canadian department store called Hudson's. Hudson Bay. Bay. Yeah. yeah. And so I don't know if the hack was before they got bought or it has to be after. So. It, yeah, it could be said. They well, might I'll tell you, getting, be, getting back to Trump and what he did with Amazon, I mean, and how he affected the stock market, uh, you know, this doesn't hurt. Uh, it, it, this hurts the, the investors. This hurts the people who own Amazon stock. They took a beating a yesterday because the pre president, yeah, because the president did some what we would call indiscriminate, uh, 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 whatever. The uh, indiscriminate. I, uh, I think he's bipolar, Alex. He's bipolar. Talk, I've been around bipolar people. Tim, talking about cyber attacks, you know that there was just a shooting today in San Francisco. Oh no, we didn't hear about YouTube, it. YouTube. Did, I didn't know we, Alex would be on tonight. One, one is, one is. Um, they didn't shoot serious, out the tape. The other one is critical, and the other one is okay, is. The woman, the woman shooter, Renee, the woman shooter took her own life. Yeah, uh, we're also did, not did, sure if she did, was did, part did, of it. You know who was promoting getting back at YouTube two weeks ago? Trump. The NRA. The NRA. No, the NRA. Yeah. They, they they reduced the number of right. put your 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 gun together videos on YouTube, and the NRA came out after him big time. Well, very yeah. nasty tweets. And, and it was and it's and very rarely is it a female. And the other point to that is is that it might be a couple. We really hope everybody's okay over there, and the people that are in the hospital now. We hope that you're coming back to our side. Um, right. Uh, we, think it, we, we think it was domestic, probably. Yeah, you know, probably somebody put a sex tape up on YouTube and she wasn't happy about it. And, uh, <laughs> we don't know what this right. is. You know, a little too soon for jokes. A little yeah. too yeah, soon. You know, yeah, the, soon, the, the body of the, of the woman who shot everybody isn't cold yet, okay? Yes. Rigor hasn't set in. All right. And we don't know that she's the only person. That was the other thing that they were talking about. But I, I'd have to turn you guys off to go get my local news. So, sorry. Uh, well, uh, you know, I just thought it was interesting uh, that not only was it a female shooter, 
and uh, you know, and they went into a business like YouTube, which is in Brisbane in uh, South San, San Francisco. Bruno. San Bruno. Boy, you San get Bruno. everything wrong. Everybody have a drink. Have a drink on that Brisbane, one. Brisbane, it's next door. It's the difference. I don't San care. It's San, San Bruno. Bruno. Get it fucking Cherry right. Avenue. San Bruno has a big sign that says uh, what? San well, Francisco. San South San Francisco. Welcome to San Bruno. Yep. That's a rock. It's down right, over right into the airport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, any yeah, I thought that was uh, that was interesting, and the um, the press uh, hasn't said very much, but the doctor at the Zuckerberg uh, General Hospital uh, isn't that was, isn't that that was kind of that was kind of a, a bliss to see that they took them to uh, they took them to the Zuckerberg Hospital. It's, no, and that's not how it's that's not how they say it either, Phil. That's not nice because Benioff. It, Benioff's Children's Hospital is not Benioff's Hospital. It's actually wherever else it is. Sorry. Well, well isn't that where Phil should go to get his thumb fixed? But Zuckerberg Hospital is Zuckerberg Hospital I now, Zuckerberg. right? I don't think Zuckerberg yes, Hospital is Yes, absolutely. There's a big giant yeah, I, sign I ask, outside that says Zuckerberg. Yeah, yeah. I should ask Zuckerberg isn't to it? fix my thumb. It's his UCSF, right. Zuckerberg. <laughs> yeah, it's UCSF. Thank you. No, but, no, but, but he, put, he, put, he, he put a yeah. lot of money in there, and they decided yeah, to name it hospital. after him. Yeah, but yeah. see that, you got it. Yeah, it's a San Francisco General Hospital Trauma and Trauma Center, Zuckerberg. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay, you can call it what you want. <laughs> okay, so Zuckerberg's hospital is treating the shooters from YouTube. Yeah. And, you know, I oh, think maybe he, he's trying to put out his competition, you know. It's I still mean, too early. Uh, hey, still one more. Don't talk to me about me being a conspiracy theorist, please. <laughs> one more, one more, one more, one more of those jokes, Phil, tonight, and I'm going to beg Alex to cut your ass off. <laughs> okay. But, no hat tricks on dead. Well, we jokes. can, we can, we can do it because he sent the mini Mac to me. So uh, yeah. it, 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 we can do hey, anything hey, Alex, to fill now. We want to voice for the board and disguise his voice. I got, like I, got, I got to say something quick though about Phil. He is such an honest person. I said to him, so okay, I'll call you tomorrow and give you my credit card number because he's going to just process my payment to him through his card right through his company and he said wait until you get and see if you'll like it now how's that for a warranty right <laughs> and by the you way you already got your card off the docker web a few minutes ago <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> right the janitor by the way a, is that a good callback i don't know i, I may yeah. be getting too old and i think it's true but uh where can i find the dark web where do i look for it you were on Torrance in the first place. Start there. Uh, first time I heard of the dark web, I just thought it was coming out of Africa, you know. But where is the dark <laughs> web? <laughs> where is the dark web? Where do it's I an find Al Gore's it? basement. <laughs> no, I mean, how do I? I want to get to the dark web. I want to see what's what is there, you know. You have yeah, to stop by the Russian embassy. They'll give yeah. you. A <laughs> what what would you say, Kevin? As the way I look at it, I don't want to go there because who knows what what you'll find. What you'll yeah. find, yeah. Supposedly there was a whole market for drugs on there and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. there was a thing so called there was stuff. a thing called the uh, Silk what the Silk Road. Silk Road. Yeah, you can buy anything: yeah. humans, drugs, wow. acid. I, I don't. I, they invented Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin, so there'd be no, yeah. no yep. Uh, yep. A record of transactions. Right. Well, fake no government over oversight. Faye got yeah. hit today. Wait, wait, let, 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 let Phil talk. T today, Faye comes to me and she says, I noticed these charges, twelve ninety nine and nine ninety nine, uh, on Apple Pay or Apple, you know, the Apple Store. Right. And she says they seem to be reoccurring, but I don't know what they're for. So she goes to the Apple Store today and says, what's this? And they said, oh, this one is for RedTube. And this one's for Pandora. Uh oh, She's, she says, "What's Red Tube?" So she comes, <laughs> so they refunded her money, and uh, she comes home and she says, "What's what's Red Tube?" And I said, "Well, it's a porn site." And so uh, she says, well, "Let me see." So I tap it in. She, she looks at it and she says, "Oh my God!" She says, "Now they 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 have my phone." Uh, I I said, "No no no, this this one." is okay oh she yeah says, how, do you, how do you know about it <laughs> i told her alex you mean me. you actually pay for porn are you the last person in america uh, to pay for no, porn she didn't know she was paying for porn somebody must have hacked it 
Oh. And she's never been to RedTube. I've never looked at it on her phone. Actually, though, you know what? Her her 6S was my old phone. But oh. I, but we got a new chip. And we went from AT&T to Verizon. There's no way that any of the things that I used to watch could have come over. And I never paid, you know. We're living in a very hackable age. And, yeah. uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about taking all my money out of the bank and putting it in my mattress, you know. Because it's going to be safer there than it is anywhere else. Yes, uh, yes, to uh, uh, Renee. Oh, okay. uh, you were talking about the gentleman who returned your wallet. You mm -hmm. should go talk to your door person and find out if they know it. What door, door person? person? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you don't have a door in. No, you need to have a door. Okay. <laughs> now, I think the guy either lives here or he, I think, may be the alternate postman, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. But it, he was wearing some kind of uniform, and I didn't pay attention to it. I was so stunned, you know, by the moment of, oh, my wallet, oh, my God, you know. And he said, yeah, I found it downstairs, see ya. And he starts walking down the stairs. Uh, he didn't take the elevator, which was up there. So I don't know that he would, you know, you know, didn't know the building pretty well. So, If he's a public servant, he's not going to be able to take a tip from you. Oh, no, I get my postman 20 bucks every year. At Christmas. You uh, no, no, see, no. The guy? Nope, they can take it. They can take it. I asked them. Yeah, yeah. They can take it. You know what you're it. describing, Alex? What? The Amazon delivery. A, a movie on the Lifetime channel called The Alternate Postman. Oh, I see. <laughs> Do you think it that this Sounds is good like, to me. You know, if he's wearing shorts and stuff like it, was he a UPS guy, maybe? Uh, you know, this no, uniform? No, no. The shorts? Shorts? When are they going to wear shorts? Winter is still here. <laughs> Well, the summer I'm, has I'm, never I'm, arrived in New York. Uh, spring has never arrived in New York City. The birds are coughing, not Dude, chirping. I, I thought they all wore shorts, these U, uh, UPS guys. Do, it, you uh, know. do they wear regular clothes? Uh, you know, d dogs are, are, are crapping and their masters are having an easy time picking it up because it's frozen, frozen. by the time it hits the ground. <laughs> are you kidding me? It was it was snowing yesterday in New York City on April the second. Okay, and today we, we, it was raining. All right, I got two inches of snow today. Wow, R really? Oh, where, you're in where? Ohio, Tim, or something? Michigan. 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 Well, you expect Michigan. Yeah, that's Center what you get. That's what you get for living in Michigan. You know. I watched the Cubs game today for a little while, and it was foggy, and and one of the guys even had his everything covered by he was trying to bat and I was just like what? what the hell's going on yeah yeah no it's really <laughs> something it's it it's just ridiculous so when you're saying that was this guy wearing shorts was he a postman no nobody wears shorts right now here's here's a shot i'm i'm uh submitting this is when you said bat uh this is i got the ball and the broken bat in the shot let me see if i can Get it up there closer. So you see the broken bat? Yeah. And, and the ball? Yeah. 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 So that was an Oakland A's game. I, I <clears throat> at that shot. No, you're very lucky to get that shot. Yeah. No, no, he was sitting down. Your, your photographic abilities had nothing to do teams. with it. It just happened to be that your camera clicked at the right time. <laughs> That's true. You know, there's no framing there. Uh, it, um, by the way, um, I, 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 yeah, yes, Jeff. So you're talking about taking your money out of your investments and things like that. My wife took all of her money out. I think no, you told me this. Years. You told me this the other day. Yeah. Because well, of Trump. And just because, before everything fell apart. So she got out of the high point. Right. Uh, so you have to make the decision. To now, what do you do? What do you do to keep from paying? Not, she, she figures that he is so unreliable. And, and he changes his mind every day that it's going to affect the stock market. My question is going to be Until here, and it is, I'll, a, I'll put it out to you guys. How long is Larry Kudlow going to be there, the, the finance guy? You mean cocaine Kudlow? Oh, wow. Snap. Another, what, why did you, you call spent him? $100,000 on cocaine. <gasps> oh, <past>. Snap. <laughs> It is a good economic advisor, don't you think? Well, how yeah, do you he know he, he was. did he get arrested for it? How you know that? Uh, you know, I don't know. I would. I just wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're making an accusation against somebody, I mean, which is, is a, a criminal no, this accusation. Was a wait a minute. The post or the 
New York Times. Oh, the Post. That's very reputable. Yeah, it's very reputable. That's a lot of money. It's, it's Post not. does not count. Uh, but at Kudlow, uh, you know, uh, I don't think is going to stay there much, uh, very long. Not with all the stuff that Trump is doing right now. He, I don't think he can feel comfortable with it. You okay, know? hold on a second. Everybody look at their calendar. I'm saying... I think Kudlow will make it until June. I say he will make it, he won't make it past the end of April. And the question now is, will he get fired or will he quit? You know, the funny thing is, maybe he'll listen to him. Maybe Trump will actually listen to him because, you know, he is on Fox. No, he wasn't uh, on Fox. What, 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 have an, on? Everybody have another drink, folks. Yeah, what was he on if it wasn't Fox? MSN, it was he was on CNBC. <laughs> CNBC. All right. So I don't watch that one either. It used to be Cudlow and Kramer, and then Kramer went off and got his own show, and it was just Larry Cudlow by himself. Yeah, and Kramer's then, good. I like uh, Booyah, yeah. you know. Yeah, so, he, I oh, mean... Uh, uh, I think, uh, and Kudlow's supposed to be a pr pretty straight up guy. I mean, he's, you know, and I don't know if he's going to put up with this bullshit for very long. He's, he's pretty full of himself. Kudlow? Then he'll yeah, stay on TV a long time. Well, then he might get along well with Trump then. They have something in common. They both like themselves. Yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I looked up in this insider about the cocaine for Larry, and it says it shouldn't cause a problem for security clearance. <laughs> well, was it ever proven? Was he ever taken to court or arrested for it? I still got to read the article. I'm oh, to read. Well, you know, before you before you besmirch yeah. a man's reputation. Yeah, Cudlow was fired from Bear Stearns in the mid '90s as he struggled with cocaine addiction. Well, I'm gonna I'll I'll give that to him. Okay, because yeah. I struggled with cocaine usage back around that time too. Yeah, but you're not going to be in the White House. <laughs> but but did why is it that everybody's passed? And by the way, I now? can I can I say I didn't struggle with it because I enjoyed every moment of it. But okay. after okay. I did then you, I, hey, Alex, I did you go to rehab? He no, went to rehab. No, no I went. Go to rehab. Uh, night, well, some people go to rehab because some people can't don't know how to quit stuff. I'm very good at quitting stuff. Like you're very at, good. You're a good quitter. Okay. I lost so. weight. You know, I did when I when I decide to do something, I do it. And I, I, I it's funny. I I quit using cocaine when I went to Florida. Now that sounds ironic. I know, <laughs> but you know, yeah. I didn't know where to find it. That, I know that sounds ironic. Right. But I I quit. And that's when I stopped doing I it. One time we went, you, Susan and I and uh, my ex-wife, Susan, we all went up to Lake Tahoe mm -hmm. for a comedy show. And there was some listener of yours that came into the hotel room and put down this massive amount of cocaine on the tabletop. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I you had guys that used to come with baggies full of it and they put it out for everybody mm -hmm. hey, could, nice could you fish. repeat that my mic wasn't picking that up right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> who doesn't believe that trump had the same problem who doesn't believe that trump had a big ass coke no i don't think he ever had no. a drug problem i don't i don't think he ever had a drug problem because of the of the drug situation or the alcohol situation with his brother which killed his brother he is was always pretty much a teetotaler on everything that way you know I, what he is addicted to he's addicted better. to be number one in the news every day and now 24 hours a day well that's why i'm uh, saying that the, i don't know you the know dopamine, the, the, he, he gets a dopamine fix there's a being, there's a codependency going on between trump and the press and the press right. somehow can't yep. keep reporting him, even though they know that what he's saying, they, he's saying, so they'll yell about it and talk about it. And I'm going to say this again, and I think it's the only way that you can drive Trump crazy. The press should go, okay, you think we're fake, you don't like us, then we're not going to report what you say. Okay. Well, yes. If there's some decision that gets made, and there's a, a you know, and and Congress has to go vote on it, and you're involved, fine. But we're not going to start talking about any of these fucking tweets that you put out, and watch how fast he goes crazy over that. Then he, he can't call him the fake press anymore. He's got to call him something else, the press who who's trying to uh, censor me. You know. <laughs> I mean, the problem is he has Fox News, Sinclair. Uh, and the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, let him let him have let him have let him have all of that. The fact of the matter is, 
if I mean, if to, MSNBC to doesn't talk about them, CNN doesn't talk about them, NBC, CBS, ABC, they don't talk about any of the tweets, any of that minutia that he does to get attention. I, it will drive him crazy. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, I'm. I think also not only with the press ignoring that, I think just the general public. I mean, I've got friends on Facebook that they live to retweet what the fuck he tweet just to bitch about what he tweets about. And, you know, I've suggested to them, why don't you do like I do? Don't fucking give a shit. I mean, you know, exactly. I don't lose one wink of sleep over any of his bullshit tweet, whether I agree with some or I disagree. I just don't bother with it. And there are friends of mine that just cannot get enough of it and then then they'll announce to everybody I'm taking a break from Facebook <laughs> or a break from Twitter because I can't handle Trump. What in whatever you do, get rid of Trump on on uh, Twitter. Yeah. I mean, Unsubscribe. Hard. But all I'm saying is, is that when I tune in every morning to like MSNBC, what are they talking about? The tweets that he made the night before in the last 24 hours, and they take it as gospel truth. If they don't report those, because they're not news, they're not news. If they don't report those, it will drive him batty. What he's doing is he's manipulating the media. Well, in magic, there is something called misdirection. Yes. And, and I believe that he is getting a lot done uh, for his agenda, and he's misdirecting everyone else and letting them talk about the minutia and the, and, and the things that well, what's aren't he, What's important. he got done for his agenda? Well, he's, got, he's signed a whole bunch of executive orders, yeah, executive and uh, orders there has been a executive number order, of— uh, Executive uh, orders don't count, Phil. He well, passed the budget. For he years. kicked 14 million people out of health care. He um, is attacking the federal judgeships. He's picking them back. Out of, uh, with all of our allies, so now we're standing pretty much alone because everybody's just laughing at us. He's blown up the metal industry. Uh, do you want me to keep going? But I you? like what he's doing, but you like he's what he's doing. I see. Yeah, That's he's kind of away like with it like uh, my wife just just crushed my balls with a, a nutcracker, and I like that. Yeah, yeah, that's I not like bad. that. <laughs> well, look what he's doing to the EPA. He's he's destroying the EPA. He's ruined the State Department. Mm -hmm. Now he's going to ruin the military. The uh, guy is ruining ruining all of our institutions. No, you know, he's ruined with, the FBI, and he's pretty much ruined the Department of Justice. Obama wanted automobiles, out. for instance, that would get fifty miles to the gallon by the year twenty twenty five. I think uh, the, these kinds of cars. Tell, me, tell that to my two grandkids that have asthma when they can't breathe. Well, wear a mask. But, you know, uh, some of these things are just too difficult. How do you feel about Pruitt? Pruitt. You know who Pruitt is, right? Yeah. yeah. He's the EPA secretary. Yes. How do you feel about the fact that he was paying below rent prices for a room in, an, in, a, in a, um, a townhouse or whatever uh, that normally would have cost somebody somewhere in the range of, oh, I don't know, $5,000 a, uh, a week uh, for absolutely nothing by somebody in the energy industry. Well, he had a coupon for Airbnb. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Hey, Phil, right. Phil, <laughs> we had hundreds of thousands of gallons of oil spilled in the Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo River here in Michigan by Enbridge. <laughs> Their lobbyist is married to the lady that owns that apartment. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. And they got, they they got, just got how do you, how, Phil? They just got approved for the, the pipeline, and they still owe a sixty-one million dollar fine. When he was just going to look the other way for that spill. When he was renting that place for fifty bucks a day, was he the uh, EPA secretary? And uh, aren't isn't he allowed to prior to being EPA secretary accept uh, things from lobbyists? And not, he, not and then do things through the EPA that benefit that corporation. Well, that That's was quick pro quo. Snap. They were also raising funds. They had fundraising in that building all the time well, for all the GOP. He wasn't the EPA secretary when he was getting the rental deal. And now that he's the EPA secretary, he's not getting the rental deal. He, and, he 
he didn't well, live in D.C. that long. Well, you know, he and when he was living there, he had a he had a deal. Now, now that he's the EPA secretary, he doesn't but live. He's, he's in bed you with know, the you know, I got to tell you something, the Phil. Phil, uh, given preferential. You're all in bed Phil, with Phil, the Phil, Phil, Phil. He's you know, uh, the part about you I don't understand is some of this stuff. You should say, well, I guess Pruitt's full of shit. Okay, you know, no, you, it's called effluent. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, uh, occasionally, don't you think that a lot of this is uh, pretty fucked? Well, you know, come on, the, Phil. Come look, on, you're, you, I know you sorry. to be an intelligent human being. You know, I can't believe that you. You, you just feel you like can't pull that card. Hmm? That card doesn't count when I'm re, uh, recanting what uh, what is reality. And the reality here is that he was not the EPA uh, secretary. And well, once once he no deal? longer was, he should have gotten out of that apartment. He did, didn't he? No. Well, he's not paying 50 bucks a day anymore. Oh? No. Yeah, what, I'll look it up. What's he paying now? Well, a lot more, I think. Uh, but, you know, he's on the government dole, so he can afford it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you, these people that he hired to be on the government dole are certainly getting a lot of that dole. I mean, in the <laughs> form of, uh, of, of expenses and free and air travel that's extraordinary. Yes, uh, Renee. You have to remember, Phil looks at things as if there's no law saying that it's illegal, then it's then he doesn't care. So if it's morally wrong, if it's a value you value, but he doesn't value, but if it's not against law, what's the big deal? That's the law. So and that's why he doesn't give a shit yeah. about how if, much. If it's not so, Phil. He touches this all the if, time. If it's not so, Phil. Excuse me, I just took a dump. Uh, you know, I just, it's just, you know, I, I just, you can't, you can't excuse some of this stuff. You, but the, according, according to Business Insider, he was living in that condo at the time Enbridge had their, their, their um, request to put that pipeline approved. I mean, by he, the he's, he's predictable. I, as I, I was telling Durst, if I could go back in a time machine, I would go back to the evening before yeah. the correspondence dinner and say to Barack Obama, don't go after Trump. Because if he hadn't done that, uh, if Trump wouldn't have walked out, okay, he wouldn't have had his feelings just hurt terribly because he was being kitted at a place where it's like a roast, right? And uh, uh, he wouldn't be taking away all these things that Obama instituted uh, because Obama didn't insult him. That's the only reason he does it. He goes after Obama like it, like it's a crusade. Yes, Patrick. I, I, I'm, I can't disagree with you on the idea that you have. However, he still had to get elected. Yeah, but when you get elected, you know, some people, it's funny. Some people can be very, what can we call it? Uh, uh, simple isn't the word I'm looking for, uh, of little substance. But once they get elected president by accident, okay, like something they didn't expect, suddenly you sober up. You know, you've been on this drunk for a while and you sober up and you say, you know, now I got to do something to run this country and I'm going to try and do the best job I possibly can. Trump, oh, isn't, Trump doesn't have that mental his mindset isn't in that place. About that's that. why John Dowd quit. He got tired of beating his head against the wall. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And now no attorney can go work for Trump because any firm that they work in, the firm said if you're going to work for Trump, you have to quit the firm. And over no, no senior attorney is going to quit a good firm. Oh, so because so they know what conflict of interest is that what they're worried about within the lawyers? So they well, the lawyers, the, off of, the ones off of Fox News, they represented another witness. It could be a hostile witness against Trump. So they're, um, they're thinking The guy with the mustache and the turtleneck, I forget his name, and his wife. But nobody else, it, Kirster has top-notch attorneys. Yeah. And McCabe raised, what, over half a million dollars in a couple of days? Yeah. <laughs> and his Was wife finally great? came out and spoke. That was great. That was interesting. 
Is she, is she, is she's going to sue? Is she? She's going to sue the president, I believe. Yeah, because it's slander. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, what did he say that was slanderous? Uh, that she hooked up with, that she got the money directly from Hillary. She's all connected to all the Hillary stuff. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I, I that besmirches, yeah, it besmirches yeah. her good name and her reputation. Yeah. But I don't know if you can sue a president while he's a standing president or sitting, sitting president or spoiling well, all over by, his uh, desk. By Memorial president. Day, you'll be out of there. So it has something to do with Bill Clinton because Bill Clinton got deposed while he was president. And so, which case that set precedence. So now no, that, that Bill that, Clinton that, no, got his that's, that's, out, that's, now they can that's in regards to a deposition. But I don't think you can sue a president of the United States. I'm going to tell you why, because I learned this. This was the first, one of the major things I learned when lawyers sat down with me and told me what I could say and what I couldn't say. And they said that if uh, you can say anything about a politician you want to and he can't sue you, and you can say anything you want to about a politician and he can't sue you. In other words, the, high, the president of the United States really can't sue and for a slander or libel. And uh, you can't sue him for slander or libel either. It's it's there's it's three women that are suing Trump right now. But the, the key but thing they, is but no, but that's Trump not that no, but president. none of that has to do with libel or slander, Tim. Yes. Oh, that's true. Yes, You're right. yes, yes. I thought Phil. one of them. I thought one of them did. No. I thought one of them was Phil. Okay, it's all the contract stuff. Okay. So I, I thought the one lady was suing suing for slander, but I, I must be wrong. I just looked it up. It seems as though Pruitt was renting a room. In the condo. Yes, that's what I said. And one room, one yes, bedroom. Yes. And he was only paying for the nights that he was there, uh, like an, it was an Airbnb contract. Uh, and they said that this rate uh, was uh, was similar to what other rooms were on Airbnb. So, and this. Well, a lot of them run one hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, and this one, uh, what was the? Uh, this is Time Magazine. Uh, another communist paper, but uh, yes, 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 Renee, you have your hand up. While Phil I have is to trying, ask, is Airbnb legal? Is that Airbnb a legal Airbnb in the state of New York? It was, was New York? It Washington, condo. Washington. It was Washington. So is it legal in D.C.? Because then you could get the owner of the condo and have them brought up on charges if it's not legal. I don't think that Airbnb is a problem in Washington D.C., but it is a problem in San Francisco. You know, they're they're making them register their units and, and doing a whole bunch of other things. But it looks like this is on the up and up. Sounds this, like they've been the, uh, they've been charged with a sex crime, having to uh, register register their units. <laughs> but yeah, really. But uh, what what they're what they're saying is is uh, this. Uh, there was another article saying that there was no. Uh, uh, there was no shenanigans. Uh, let me see if I can find it again. Yeah, you're gonna but you're gonna find you, you're, you're not gonna. Uh, why don't you try and find the article that says he's dead to rights? They got him dead to rights. Why don't you bring out that article? You know, you're <laughs> looking for the more. the articles that excuse the bad behavior. Yes, yeah. Jeff, quickly, you have your hand up. Oh, your mic isn't on. Your mic isn't on. I think his daughter yeah. was uh, using that. That same uh, hotel. It's an for, apartment. Uh, it's an apartment. For Washington's going to college. Oh, okay. Uh, no. Well, whatever. Hey, that's our theme. You know what that means? We're through. Hey, this has been this has been a good night tonight. Really good night tonight. Started off with uh, 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 Bill, Bill Durst, and uh, that was terrific. He was terrific, and and then you guys were just uh, great as well. Except for you, Phil. You always suck. Anyway, <laughs> Tim, thank you so much. Uh, Jeff, thank you. Renee, thank you. Phil, thank you. Patrick, oh, thank you. And Kevin, you didn't say anything much tonight, but we always like just having you filling up a square there. Uh, and he got his haircut. Yeah. Just give everybody a big round of uh, a big wave goodbye. <laughs> give a big round of applause. Give a big wave goodbye. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, see you all again tomorrow night. Bye. Okay, that's it. Uh, let me see here. I got to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, gosh, I'm, I'm just, I'm so screwed. Uh, anyway, that's it for tonight, by the way. 
Uh, stay tuned now for The Intersection with Jack and Amy, followed by Connections at uh, 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. And then tomorrow night at uh, uh, the, the uh, 30 hour, uh, 9.30, it'll be, I'm trying to do everything at the same time here. Uh, it'll be, uh, uh, <laughs> it'll be uh, uh, Damien Chaplin with the exchange. And I'll see you tomorrow night, same time, same station, and live in the meantime. If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye. <laughs>